Hey friends, thank you so much for checking out this video. My name is Rachel. I am a blogger and lover of all things cold brew and today we're going to be checking out the Coffee Panda Cold Brew Maker. Now this maker is awesome because it's meant for a smaller portion. So if you're making it for at home use or you're just playing around with different cold brews, it's perfect to use. This maker specializes in using an immersion style cold brew. So that means that the beans are going to be in the water throughout the entire steeping process. So today I'm going to go over how to use the maker best and to use our beans, we are going to be doing the Cafe Moto Peruvian style beans. It's a single origin, fair trade, organic, and freshly roasted. So we should have a really delicious cold brew waiting for us at the end. So the coffee pan and maker has a couple of parts to it. We have this top part that seals everything together to prevent any air coming in or out, which is great when we have our cold brew steeping. And then we have this top part here. It has a handle attached so that when your cold brew is done, you can hold it like a pitcher. And we have the filter that's attached in the middle. Now this filter is a mesh style filter um, and it's really fine. So what's great is that it's reusable. You don't have to worry about changing it out. All you have to do is after a couple uses, make sure to wash it with soap and water with a, um, a sponge or even a brush cleaner. And this bottom part also comes off. So it'll be really easy to let your beans out when you're done if you wanna let it dry or wet, whatever you prefer. So first things first, don't do what I used to do the first couple times I used this and have this part on and then put the filter like that. Because what happens is that even though the filter does technically fit, when you go to put your top part on, it doesn't go on all the way. So the correct way to put on the filter is actually from the bottom. And it actually screws into this top part like that. So then it's set and good to go. Once you have it together like this, then you can go ahead and put it into your maker. Now for the coffee to bean ratio, I recommend filling up the filter as much as you can with beans and then filling up completely with water if you prefer a lighter cold brew. The only downside with makers like these is that it has a pretty set ratio to um, coffee. If we're gonna cut that, let me restart. So one of the critiques with any maker that's this style is that the ratio of coffee to water is preset for you. I mean, you have a filter this size and then you have a container this size. So if you wanna adjust your coffee to water ratio, you have to play around more so with the water than with the coffee, if that makes sense. Um, but we're gonna try it as it's recommended to see how it comes out. If it's just perfect, it could be stronger, or if it's too strong. And all you gotta do, as it's together, you go ahead and you scoop and you put your beans into the container like that. Now when it's completely full, it holds about 16 tablespoons of coffee grounds. And with this style of a cold brew maker, you really wanna make sure that your beans are coarsely grind. If you do any finer of a grind, what you're gonna notice is you have a bigger chance of sediment getting through. Just because with these types of filters, it's a lot easier for that sediment to get through. Any finer particles, they can easily get into the cold brew. So like I said, as coarse as possible. And you fill it up all the way, but don't bore you with that. And then once you have it filled up, you slowly add water. Now one thing to note with this type of filter, you don't want to add your water too quickly. You want to give it time to get through all the beans and into the pitcher because if you pour your water too quickly, the beans will kind of overflow and they'll get into your pitcher. And we don't want coffee grounds in the pitcher. That's the last thing we want. So make sure that you pour the water slowly and also stir the grinds and help the water go down faster. So you fill it up with coffee, fill this up with water, and then you take your top part screw it on top and it keeps everything sealed so that we can prevent any of the you know odors or air getting into the coffee and then you go ahead and you just put it in your refrigerator now they recommend 12 to 24 hours I did 24 per usual because I think it's really easy to know exactly the time that you put it on the one day you just pull it out the next day so let's go ahead and see how it turned out with the Peruvian beans you know how they talk about coffee the size of your head we're literally there so it has a really earthy smell to it. I'm not really getting any like chocolate notes per se, but kind of more of a dirt, earthy, more savory smell. I would digest this ratio. It's not quite strong enough. Um, I still can taste the flavor of the beans. It's a very earthy cold brew. 
has a bit of richness to it, not necessarily like a chocolate flavor per se, but it's definitely really tasty. Um, I imagine over ice it will taste really good. But I would adjust this so that there isn't as much water in the pitcher so that we get a stronger cold brew. Doing it as recommended per Coffee Panda, it's just not quite where I want it to be for my cold brew. I want a little bit more of a mm to it, and it's just not quite there. Another way you could adjust this too is to let the beans even steep more, so do 36 hours. Um, but when you get into that, then you can notice sometimes that your coffee or your cold brew gets a little too saturated and it could be harder to dilute it afterwards. So like I said, I'd probably play around with doing a little bit less water. But that's what's really fun about these types of cold brew makers is that it gives you this freedom to play around and do small batches. You don't have to worry about making five gallons of cold brew and if it doesn't turn out good, wasting it and throwing it all away. With making small little batches like this, you can let your imagination go wild and not have to worry about wasting beans or water or cold brew or any of the sort. As a cold brew, I would give this a 3.75 out of 5. I think it has a lot of potential as a different method. I'm curious to see what it'd be like doing the drip style, the Kyoto method, um, and we'll do a future video with that as well. Um, some of the flavors it's pulling I like and some of them I don't like. So like I said, this just may not be the right method for this type of bean. And that's the case with almost every single coffee out there is that different cold brew methods work for different types of beans. And the trick is just finding out which one works best with which type of bean. And this is where I come in to help you guys find the best cold brew for you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Now before you go, I have a bit of a surprise. Coffee Panda is letting me give away not just one, but two of their cold brew makers. There's just two quick little things you gotta do. The first, subscribe to the Cold Brew Chick Podcast on iTunes. And second, rate and review the show. There's a ton of episodes on there for you to check out. From CBD cold brew to nitro to everything in between, there's something for everybody that's a cold brew lover. The contest starts now and it ends next Friday, which is coming up soon, so don't hesitate. I hope you win!